Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm here with another A-Level Chemistry exam question walkthrough focusing on the preparation of organic solids and liquids, which if you do AQA chemistry is a required practical 10. In this video, I'll be talking about the theory behind the question and I'll be writing that down in blue and the answers that are gonna get you the actual marks will be shown in green and they'll be bullet pointed step by step. If you fancy having a go at this question before watching the video, you can download the question as a link to the PDF in the description. In this question, we are looking at the synthesis of aspirin, and we're told that it can be produced by reacting salicylic acid, which is actually shown down here at the bottom, with ethanoic anhydride. And there is an incomplete 10-point method for how we determine the yield of aspirin produced shown in this section here. And then it says in part A, describe the instruction that is missing from step four of the method and then justify why this step is necessary. So that's going to be one mark for each of those key points. And so the first thing that's happened is we've added six grams of salicylic acid to a weighing boat and then we've placed it on the two decimal point balance to record the mass. And then we tip the salicylic acid into a conical flask and then what do we do? And so as you can see from my picture, we think we've added six grams of salicylic acid to this conical flask, but we might be wrong. And what we have to do is we have to re-weigh that empty weighing boat, and that's to find out if it really is empty. And so what we do is we calculate the exact mass of salicylic acid that's been added to the reaction mixture using a process called weighing by the difference. So we take the mass of the weighing boat with the six grams of salicylic acid, we add the six grams of salicylic acid, and then we reweigh the boat to find out if that six really did transfer or if it was just less than six that was transferred. And then the question moves on to step five of the method and it says add 10 cm cubed of ethanoic anhydride to the conical flask and swirl. And the question says what piece of apparatus would be suitable to measure that 10 cm cubed? Well, the best thing to use would probably be a 10 centimeter cube pipette because that is a really sensitive piece of equipment. We could use a 10 centimeter cube syringe or we could use a burette. You could use a 10 centimeter cube measuring cylinder, but crucially, something that's going to measure volume that is going to be good and sensitive and have a sort of a high resolution and allow you to be really confident that you've got 10 cm cubed and not a different volume. Another way of looking at it would be you want a piece of equipment with a low absolute uncertainty. And then question C moves on to step six of the method and says identify a hazard of using concentrated phosphoric acid in step six. And really it could be concentrated any acid that we are identifying the hazard for, and that is corrosive. So that means it will burn the skin or could cause permanent eye damage if we weren't careful and managing that risk suitably. And part D asks us to complete the equation for the reaction of salicylic acid with ethanoic anhydride to produce aspirin. And so we've got two gaps, one on the left-hand side and one on the right-hand side. We need to complete both of those gaps for the one mark. And so ethanoic anhydride has got this structure and that is the reactant, they name it in the question. So this is a case of us remembering what the structure of ethanoic anhydride is. And anhydrides generally are formed from the combination of two acid molecules, two carboxylic acid molecules of the same type, and it's a condensation reaction that ends up removing water in the formation of the anhydride. And that's why it's called an anhydride, because water has been removed. And so to fill in the right-hand side of the equation, we've really got two choices. We can just remember what the other product will be when anhydrides react, or we can dig a little bit deeper into what's happening here. And so the change in terms of what's happening to the salicylic acid to turn it into aspirin is we're adding this acyl group on the right hand side. We're adding these two carbons and the oxygen in the carbonyl group. And so that has come from the ethanoic anhydride. It's come from just under half of the ethanoic anhydride because what happens is the alcohol group here with its lone pair will undergo nucleophilic addition elimination and so it will attack the carbonyl of the ethanoic anhydride, either of the two carbonyls, it's symmetrical, 
and then that will then eliminate ethanoic acid from the rest of the ethanoic anhydride. And so the second molecule that forms on the right hand side is ethanoic acid and that's its structural formula like so. That's what's needed for the second part of that one mark. It's really common for there to be an amount of substance elements of an organic synthesis question and we've got one here. We've been told we've got 6.01 grams of salicylic acid and we've been given its MR here, so almost certainly we'll be asked to calculate the moles. We've been told what volume of ethanoic anhydride we're using and we've been given its MR. And we've been told that the yield of aspirin is 84.1%. And then we've been told that the density is 1.08 grams per centimetre cubed. And our command is show by calculation which reagent is in excess, and then calculate the mass of aspirin, which has got an MR of 180, that would be produced. And so when you're showing which age reagent is in excess, we need to work out the moles of both of them. And so as predicted, the moles of salicylic acid, that should be the first thing that you calculate by doing mass over MR. And so that gives us a moles of salicylic acid of 4.36 times 10 to the minus 2. And then we need to work out the moles of ethanoic anhydride. And there's two steps to this. So the second and third mark will come in here. So we've been given the density and we've been given the volume. So since density is mass over volume, mass will be density times by volume. And so when we do 10.5 times by 1.08, we get 11.34 grams. And now, since we've got the MR of 102, we can work out what the moles of ethanoic anhydride is by dividing that new mass that we've calculated by the MR of 102. And in that situation, we get 1.11 times 10 to the minus 1, or 0.111. And so since in the previous part of the question we saw that the mole ratio was one to one, so one salicylic acid to one ethanoic anhydride, it's just a case of looking at which of these two numbers is the larger. And it's of course the ethanoic anhydride that is present in excess because 0.111 is larger than 4.36 times 10 to the minus 2. And so from here on in, now we've declared what's in excess, we need to use the limiting factor moles to work out the moles of aspirin that we would produce. So actually for this fifth mark, we've got quite a bit to do. What we have to do is we have to work out the mass of aspirin by taking our moles of salicylic acid, multiplying it by the MR of aspirin, and that would be if we got a 100% yield, because it's a one-to-one -one mole ratio, remember, that's why we use the moles of salicylic acid, and then since it's an 84.1% yield, we need to multiply that mass by 0.841 or 84.1 over 100, however you like to express that as a percentage. And then that gives us a final mark of 6.59 grams of aspirin. And I would suggest at least two significant figures, but as a good rule of thumb, three. And the least precision that we've been given in the question is three significant figures. So that's really what we should report our answer to here. And so one mark for each of those steps for the total of five. Then the question says, suggest two ways in which the melting point of the crude aspirin, so by crude it means impure, collected in step nine, would differ from the melting point of the pure aspirin. And so mixtures of substances, that's what we've got here with the crude aspirin. So we've got aspirin plus other things. And so mixtures always have a range of values for their melting point and their boiling point. And so for the first point, I would say is there's going to be a range of different melting points. And so it won't be that sharp, crisp, clear, precise value for a melting point. And then when we have a mixture of substances, the melting point is actually lower than it would be if it was pure. So for the second mark, we just need to say that the melting point would be a lower value. And just to help you remember that, remember that we add salt to ice in the winter time to help lower that melting point and then the ice will melt because it's not cold enough to keep that ice as a solid and it turns into liquid water because we've added that salt to produce a mixture. The final part of this question moves on to tell us about the purification of aspirin 
and it tells us that we use hot ethanol to do that and the boiling point of hot ethanol is 78 degrees C and ethanol is the solvent. And I actually go into more detail about re recrystallization in another question walkthrough, so don't forget to check that out. But in this question, we're asked to describe two important precautions when heating the mixture of ethanol and crude aspirin. And so the point here is that lots of organic liquids are going to be flammable and ethanol absolutely is flammable. And so to help protect ourselves from the ethanol catching on fire, what we need to do here is use a water bath to heat the ethanol or maybe use a hot plate or a heating mantle or an electric heater to heat the ethanol and the reaction mixture. What you would absolutely not use is don't use a Bunsen burner. So for the first mark, you need to be communicating that as a core idea. And then the second precaution when you're doing this is to make sure that you don't boil away your ethanol during the recrystallization step. So make sure you keep the temperature of your solvent below 78 degrees Celsius, because if you do, then the ethanol won't boil away. You'll get the ethanol hot, and it needs to be hot during the recrystallization process, but you don't want to lose the ethanol because that will not get you such a good yield of your pure aspirin at the end. A third point you could maybe say is to use the minimum volume of solvent. That's another way that you can maximize the yield of your organic product. And then H moves on to say pure aspirin is filtered under reduced pressure using a Buchner funnel, shown here on the right hand side as a little picture for how you do that. Explain the purpose of adding a small amount of cold ethanol. What that does is we're washing the aspirin that forms and collects on the top in the Buchner funnel and we're washing away any soluble impurities that haven't yet passed through the filter paper with the rest of the filtrate. And actually what that does, as well as removing those soluble impurities, is actually because we're using cold ethanol, we will avoid dissolving our aspirin because aspirin is only soluble in the hot ethanol. And the very last mark of this question is asking us to describe a difference in the appearance that you would expect between our pure solid aspirin and our impure, our crude aspirin. And the pure product, if you've done the recrystallization correctly, is going to have larger crystals and they're going to be um, much more white than the crude crystals. And you could say that they are a lighter colour, you could say that they are less grey or more needle-like crystals or just more crystalline. But what certainly will be the case is that there'll be a shinier single colour as opposed to the crude mixture which might look grey and it might look powdery and certainly it will be definitely distinguishable because it will be smaller crystals. Okay, that's the end of this question. That's the end of the video. I'll see you again soon with another A-level chemistry question walkthrough. Hope it was useful. Goodbye.